People like games. What up, folks? It's Reggie with People Like Games. And today we're talking about the most ambitious crossover in video game history. Do not fight me on this. Let's get right into it with one of my favorite game series of all time, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is the love child of Squaresoft and Disney. Back in 2002, this all sounded like a pipe dream. But Hironobu Sakaguchi and Shinji Hashimoto came up with the idea after falling in love with the most famous 3D free roam platformer of all time, Super Mario 64. But without a proper mascot to get behind, they were just kind of stuck with the idea. But as the story goes, back in the early 2000s, Square actually shared an office with Disney Japan. And a chance meeting between Hashimoto and some Disney execs led to the actual greatest elevator pitch of all time. And somehow, Disney agreed. Enter Tetsuya Nomura. Nomura had been working with Square since the 90s, starting off as a debugger on Final Fantasy IV, eventually getting some drawing lessons and graduating to character designer, most notably working on Final Fantasy VII. As a kid, Nomura was a huge fan of manga, no shocker for anyone who's been following RPG Month. He was also a huge fan of Dragon Quest, which introduced him to the idea of story elements in gaming. From there, his art teacher introduced him to the more complex Final Fantasy through the art of Yoshitaka Amano. Nomura would eventually apply to Square after seeing an ad drawn by none other than Amano himself. The funny thing is, at the time, it was just too ridiculous to imagine these franchises coming together. Disney is notorious for the handling of their IP, and just on the surface, it made no sense. You can't tell me you can imagine Donald Duck and Cloud Strife throwing magic at each other on the battlefield. It's still trippy to this day, and we're already over 10 games deep. Disney of all companies was surprisingly hands-off and gave Square mostly free reign over the Disney vault. That is, aside from their mascot, Mickey Mouse. He was only afforded very few scenes and voice lines, but damn were they impactful. With Mickey's reveal in the final act, the weight of his appearance is only amplified further. And what about that cast? If you thought Final Fantasy The Spirits Within was stacked, we've got Haley Joel Osment, also known as the Sixth Sense Kid, playing your main character Sora, Hayden Panettiere as Kairi, David Gallagher from Seventh Heaven as Riku, Mandy Moore coming in to play Aerith, and Lance Bass, yes, Lance Bass from NSYNC as Sephiroth. Not to mention the returning voice actors from Disney, you can't tell me you didn't double take after hearing Hades' voice. Now, let's get into that story. No, this will not be me attempting to explain Kingdom Hearts to you. We could spend hours and hours here and just scratch the surface. But I will say this, every game is important. Originally, Nomura's desire to remain close to the source material was showing a bit too much in the direction for his game. It was almost too kid-friendly. Sakaguchi approached Nomura and told him that his game would flop if it didn't live up to the complexity of Final Fantasy. And it seems like Nomura took that to heart. With the added maturity came a much deeper, some might say more convoluted story. While it definitely isn't the easiest to follow and creates a very real barrier to entry, it's also one of the most beloved parts of the series. And Square's probably happy that allows them to resell the game over and over to keep new players invested. Now picture yourself in 2002. You hear Square and Disney are creating a video game together. Your first thought? That's a flop. Well, Nomura didn't think so. He included a secret cutscene accessible only after completing everything in the game. This over-the-top, almost nonsensical teaser was ultimately a trail of breadcrumbs for the true story Nomura had in his head. And oh boy, did he run with it from there. Kingdom Hearts 1 from a narrative perspective is one of the only games that can stand on its own in the series. But Nomura's mysterious cutscene showed how deep the rabbit hole could go. And trust me, this one goes on and on. Kingdom Hearts further set itself apart from the rest of Square's titles through its battle system. Along with the free roam world, Kingdom Hearts would adopt a more active battle system and has become infamous to some as a button masher. While you may be able to get through a good amount of the game mashing X, 
you've got loads of magic, transformations, and summons a la Final Fantasy in order to mix up your combat throughout the series. Like I said, I could go on and on about this series, but I've got to mention the impact that Kingdom Hearts had on the merger of Squaresoft and Enix. The idea was floating around as early as 2000, but Square's box office bomb slowed talks to a crawl. Only after the success of Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts did negotiations start again. And just a few months after Kingdom Hearts' original release, the merger went through on April 1st, 2003. This effectively brought three of the most famous and influential JRPGs under one roof. Think about that for a second. Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy had brought out some of Japan's strongest developers. Their first collaboration led to a cult classic in Chrono Trigger. And from there, the most outlandish dreams became reality with the inception of Kingdom Hearts. Unfortunately, that's all the time I've got today, folks. Let us know what you think of Kingdom Hearts down in the comments, and we'll see you next week. Peace.